are different time uh, phases where we do different things. For example, going to the supermarket, going to a whole world, dropping the kids at school, uh, having time with your family, blessing the name of the Lord, uh, practicing some uh, an, a sport, uh, sleeping. We have time for everything. Amen? And if we don't have time, we make time for the things in our life because we need time on our hands. Although sometimes we say time flies by, all the days gone by so quickly, so much to do, so little time. But we are in need of time continually and if time is not on our hands, we say we make time to do the things that we want to do in our lives. Amen. And most of the time when we bring the things to a spiritual level and we talk about God, do we really have time for God? When sometimes you ask uh, people, do you want to come? The service, you want to listen to a portion of the word of the Lord, you want to be encouraged. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We hear no other have time, no one busy. And then the question rises do we really not have time for the Lord? Amen. Many say they don't have time to go to church, or they don't have time to pray, or they don't have time to read the scriptures, hallelujah, to talk to others about Jesus Christ. We don't have time, we don't have time because we are so busy with the things that we ourselves already have to do. But remember one thing, God created a time for everything. His word says in the book of Ecclesiastes, there is a time for everything, a time to be born, a time to die, there's a time to plant, another time to take out what has been planted, there's a time to love, there's a time to hate, there's a time for everything. God has established a time for everything in our lives, amen? amen. And we have the time to seek the Lord. As it is established in his word also, there is a time to seek when we are in need. Amen. Amen. And so today is the time to seek the Lord. We see how the world is developing, how things are going on and on each and every day. We are more and more conscious of the fact that we need the Lord and that we need to make time to seek the Lord. Amen. Amen. And the question rises, why is it so important? Hallelujah. To seek the Lord. Why do we have to acknowledge the fact that it is time to seek the Lord? Well, first of all, because God will not always be available for us. Amen? There will come a time where the Word of God says Jesus is coming soon to raise up the church to go with Him into the heavens. And that is when our time as human beings, the chances, the opportunities of salvation, of a hope, will end. It will not always be available eternally that I can go on and living as I would like to live, doing the things I want to do, because, oh, I have all the time in the world. No. The Word of God says that He is giving us an opportunity. He is patient, blessed be the name of the Lord. Which means that one day, the patience of our God will run out. God is patient. God is merciful. But He always sets limits to us as human beings. Amen. One of the reasons why God, why Jesus hasn't returned yet for his church is because he is patient. His word says in 2 Peter 3 verses 9 and 10, he doesn't tarry his promise. Amen? But he is patient and merciful to allow all to come. He doesn't want any one of us to perish, to go astray, to go uh, to hell without salvation. That's why he's patient, giving us opportunities, chances to reconcile, to repent, to change our lives. Amen. And that's why still Jesus hasn't come to get his church. But his promise is that one day he will return and God will. Amen. You may be there, um, have, having made use of the opportunity that God has given you, that you have sought the Lord as you should have. Amen. Amen. God has given us time Amen. to change from our wicked ways. I'm saying our because the fact that we are Christians doesn't make us exempt of not sinning, exempt of, of being uh, uh, perfect beings. No, we are also human. We are still in the flesh. And sometimes we commit mistakes. We sin conscious, unconsciously. Amen. But we also have to come to the Lord always in repentance. Ask of Him His mercy and His grace to give us the strength to move on, to, to live for Him according to His word. Because that is the way God has established it to be. We see this example in, in, in Noah. How God sent the message and told them, Noah tell the people 
a flood is coming for them. Amen. Amen. You will preach to them until the day of the flood. Which means God is giving a period of grace and mercy, but he has set a limit to it. You will preach until the day I say it is enough and the flood is coming. You see that God is giving chances and chances and chances. He didn't just say, Noah, build the ark, pick up the animals, and you all leave. No. While you are building the ark, Noah, preach. Preach that I am God, I exist, I am merciful, and that I am going to finish the earth with waters. And those who repent, those who come to believe, they will also enter the ark. But we see the word of says that the final day came. When the animals all entered into the ark, and Noah and his family, although they have preached so much, they have thought about uh, what God was saying, rain was going to come, a flood was going to come, nevertheless, not one man, not one woman, not one child had come to Noah to enter into the ark. And the word of God said that when they entered into the ark, the Lord God himself closed the door. Amen? We need to pay attention that why did God himself close the door? Because he knows that we as human beings, Noah being a human being, when he would start to hear the cries of the people, Noah, please open my children, my family, open the door, open the door, we need salvation, please. Noah in his weakness of being a human would have opened the door. But that is why God himself closed the door. Why? Because he is a fear God. All the time that Noah had been preaching and telling the people about the flood that was coming, that was a chance God was giving those people. And he knew that their chance had passed by, and that's why he closed the door. The ark is the symbol, it is the, uh, the representation of what is going to happen to us now as the church. Amen. The ark represents Jesus Christ. <laughs> we are the one. The church is the one uh, in the form of Noah who are preaching the gospel, telling people that Jesus is coming soon. And when he closes the door, no one can open it. There will be the, limit, the end of his patience, his the soul. end of his mercy. But that is why he's telling us it is now time to seek the Lord. We can seek him while he still can be found. Amen. Another example we see is the example of Lot. How Abraham went into the presence of the Lord and he said, the Lord told him, Abraham, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. That's it. And Abraham came into the presence of the Lord and said, Lord, if there are 50, would you still destroy it? No, I wouldn't. 40, no. 30, no. 20, 10, 5, 1, no. If there were at least one just man, I would not destroy Solomon and Gomorrah. But he knew, Abraham knew that his family was still there. Lot and his family was still there when he was pleading for them. And because of the pleading of Abraham, the Lord allowed angels to come to the house of Lot and bring them out of there. And we see that Lot tried to convince, to tell the angels, you know, we have everything here, our life is here, my family, we have everything we need here, please ask God. But the angel said, no, make haste, get out of here because the Lord is going to destroy this place. And we see that Lot started to tarry a bit. The angels took them by the hand and put them out of the city. Amen. That was God granting them a chance because he said, it is definite that I am going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. The word of God says that this, this earth we are living on today, one day will be passed away. The Lord is coming to pass judgment on the earth, but he would not allow his sons and his daughters to be condemned all together with it. No, that is why his word is coming out. That is why he's telling us it is time to seek the Lord. Amen. So we seek the Lord because there's a limit. We know that one day his patience is going to run out and then we're not walking in his ways. It will go, it will end wrongly with us. Amen. Amen. Why does God want us to seek him now also? Because of the fact that there will be a time when our prayers will not be heard anymore. Amen. If we go to the word in Proverbs chapter 1 for a moment. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 1. Verses 28. Hallelujah. Book of Proverbs chapter 1, verse 28, where it says, Then they shall call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Why? Because the time of 
seeking, the time of praying, the time of pleading has gone by. And the Lord will not be available then. So there will be a time when our cries will not be heard anymore. Now is the time when we pray and cry out unto the Lord that the Lord, the word says, He lends down His ear to hear our prayers, to hear our supplication, to hear what it is we need. Blessed be the name of the Lord. At that time, the Lord Jesus Christ will not be a Savior anymore, but He will come as a judge to judge everyone conform to what He has done, good or bad, Amen. on this earth. Amen. And that's why He says, Seek Him while He can be found. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 6, where we just read, Seek Him while He can be found. Amen. Because He can be found right now. Amen. But He's saying that because there will be a time when He cannot be found anymore. You cannot call out unto Him anymore because it then will be too late. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Why does God want us to seek Him now? Because the gospel, there will come a time when the gospel will not be preached anymore. This is what we're doing here as a church, as Christians, going around sharing the word of the Lord, telling people about Jesus, telling people about what God can do in their lives as soon as they accept Him. In those times, when the Lord has already come and called His church into the heavens, there will be no one to go around. Then they will be looking by the way, let me call for the They will call, no one will pick up the phone because it's gone. No word of hope. No word of healing, no no future, no word of future, nothing. Because the chance has gone by. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Yes. If we wait a little longer, if we tarry to repent, if we tarry to change our lives, if we tarry to become a son or daughter of God, it might be too late. Sometimes when you imagine when you share the word of God with others, and they say, you know, yeah, I, I know the truth. I know that I need change. I know that I need the Lord in my life and my family, but I'm not ready yet. But how sad, how, how inconvenient it is when sometimes you would open your newspaper and find that same person that you just shared the message of the Lord with, and he didn't make use of that opportunity, and you find him there, he's already gone. Amen. It's a bad feeling. It's a mixed feeling you have in your heart because you say, Lord, he had that chance. If you had taken that minute, that second, to repent and change his life, everything will be given right now. Amen. So we should not carry to seek the Lord, but seek him now that we have the opportunity to do it. Amen. Amen. We seek the Lord. Why? Because life is too fragile. Amen. Death comes to everyone. The word of God says it is established for every man to die and then judgment. That's it. It will come for us sooner or later. It is there. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We choose many times during the track of our lives. We choose what to study. We choose our friends. We choose who we want to marry. We choose where we want to live. We choose what car we want to drive, etc., etc. Amen. But the only choices that are not in our hands is the choice of being born and the choice of dying. Amen. It is established by God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Both of them are in the hands of of the Lord. Amen. They are not in our control. Life is something so delicate. In, in one day you are here, the other day you are not. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If we go for a moment in the book of Hebrews, chapter 9. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verses 27. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 27, where it says, and as it is appointed of men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Amen. There it is clearly in the word of the Lord. Why it is we have to seek the Lord? Because as I said, death can come at any moment. The Bible compares our life, the human life, as a shadow, as mist, as, as smoke. The word of God says also our life is like the grass that just withers away. It's like a, a blow of a wind. Once it's there, then it's not there anymore. That's your life. One minute you're here, the other you're not. When the other words, it means these are figures of all things that are there for a brief moment. We are all here on this earth for a brief moment. God has shared with us His breath of life for a brief moment. Amen. Hoping that we will make use of it 
in the right way, serving Him, living for Him according to His Word, uh, make, uh, causing change in our lives according to His way. Amen. So that is why we need to change our lives. We need to seek the Lord. Why do we need to seek the Lord? Because God rewards those who seek Him. The Word of God says there, there is blessing for those who seek the Lord. When we go to the book of Luke, book of Luke, no, the book of Matthew, chapter 5, you'll see how Jesus Christ Himself shares the blessings for those who seek Him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The book of Matthew, chapter 5. Verses 3 where it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say, All manner of evil against you fall free for my sake. Rejoice and be ex exceeding glad, for great is what? Your reward in heaven. Amen. So you see, the Lord rewards those who seek Him and seek Him diligently. Amen. So the Lord wants us to seek Him now because life has a fight. He wants us to seek Him not because He rewards us, but because He finds pleasure in having communion, in having fellowship, in having a relationship with each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. The book of Hebrews chapter 11, verses 6. Let us go there for a moment. The book of Hebrews 11, verses 6. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. So you see, there is blessing in seeking the Lord. There is hope in seeking the Lord. There is a reward in seeking the Lord. What about said that those who stay, those who persevere until, until the end, they shall have the reward. The word of God says in the book of Revelation, they shall get the crown. They shall have a stone with a new name on it. So many other blessings you find in the book of Revelation, but only for those who persevere. And who persevere to, to, to know what God wants in our lives, you need to seek Him. You need to go into His Word. You need to know how to please the Father with your Father, with my Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When we have our children, how pleasant it is for the children to obey their parents, or not? Amen. Amen. We enjoy it when our children obey us because you say something, they do it. And you find pleasure because the obedience brings good things. It brings Amen. rewards. But when we so when the children disobey, what does it bring? Punishment. Bad things happen. Licks. Amen. Those things happen when there is disobedience. Why? Because they did not seek to please the parents. They did not seek to obey what is the word. The same that we apply to our, our lives as Christians. We have one Father, God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. And they have left the word here for us to obey. And they enjoy. God enjoys the fact that we seek Him. That we obey. Seeking means to obey, to find the way to please the Lord in our lives. Amen. Blessed be His name. God is willing. Amen satisfy our most deepest needs of our souls. Amen? Though the things that are physical will pass away. The Word of God says that this world and all that is in it will one day pass away, but this <coughs> world will remain, remain will pass away, will remain forever. Amen. The Spirit. Jesus said unto his disciples in an occasion, do not be afraid of the one who can destroy the flesh. But be a be fearful of the one who has the power over the flesh, but also over your spirit. Amen? So we need to seek the Lord because the spirit is what's going back to the Lord. And the word of God says we will be before his throne to account for everything that we have done. Be good, be an evil. Amen? But we will need to seek the Lord in order to be 
satisfied by him. Amen. Amen. God is willing, as his word says, to forgive. And I said, the fact that we are Christians doesn't make us exempt of being mistaken. No. We also make mistakes as long as we are grounded here on this earth. We still have the, the chance to make mistakes, to disobey God, to do things that do not please Him. But there He is, always as a merciful Father, just expecting us to turn back and He will forgive us. Amen. God is also willing to give us hope. This world, all it brings is false hope. Everything it gives you is uh, just for a moment there, but God gives us eternal hope. He gave us promises of eternal peace. Amen. Promises of eternal rest in His presence, but only to those who seek Him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Although sometimes we think, sometimes we have excuses and we say, I don't have time to go to church, I don't have time to pray, to seek the Lord, I don't have time to read the scriptures. We do have time. And if we don't have time, we should make time for Him. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The same thing we do in our daily lives when we have our schedules. Oh no, I have to pick up the kids. But during picking up the kids from school, I, I have to appoint them at somewhere else. I need to figure out how to fix this because I need to attend both of them. I need to attend my children and I need to attend my appointment. But you find a way, you make time for the both of them. We should also make time for the Lord. God gave us 24 hours. And if you just sit and meditate, how many of those hours do we give the Lord? One minute, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just a morning prayer, an evening prayer. Amen? Amen. Give time to the Lord and you will see how God will reward you for Amen. giving time to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Don't wait until you're in prison to then give time to the Lord. Amen? Don't wait until you're in the hospital to then cry out and make time for the Lord. Don't wait until you maybe be diagnosed for, with some incurable disease and then you remember, oh no, I have to make time for God. Amen? Don't wait until you're in a difficulty to seek God. Amen? There's a saying that goes, God should be your 24-7, not your 911. Amen? Your 24-7, not the one you die when you're in an emergency. And then you know where to seek God. No, He should be your 24-7. Every time, every moment you have a moment to yourself, you say, Lord, I thank you for life. I thank you for saving me. I thank you for your strength. I thank you for changing me. Bless my house, bless my children, my family. Keep us safe, keep us safe. Give us the strength to move through this world, to live in a way you would love us to live. Amen? In a 24-7 way. Remember that thing. God is, should be your 24-7, not your 9 Amen? If you remember that always, you will say, you know, God was my 24-7 today. Let's make time for the Lord. Amen? Amen? So you see, the Word of God says also, if you hear His voice, when? Today. Harden not your heart. Because he knows, his word says, he knows that today is the chance. We don't know about tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday. It doesn't have my name, your name. It's not called Nisha Day, Juliana Day. Their name, Curtis Day, Sina Day. No, it's called Saturday, which means it's not guaranteed for you and me. It has its own names with its own worries. If God grants us another day, we praise and give Him thanks. Amen. Yeah. But His Word says, if you have the chance of hearing His Word today, and His Word has spoken to your heart about something that is wrong, acknowledge it and fix it as quick as possible. Because today, His Word has come to you. It is important to seek the Lord now that we have a chance. Amen. If you hear the news and listen to the things all around the world, in the Asian countries, the Eastern countries, how other Christians are struggling. They don't have this liberty of coming together, speaking about the Lord, singing, praising the Lord. No, they don't have it. They do it secretly because if they find them, it's a death penalty. But we have the opportunity. We have the blessing of being able to seek the Lord in freedom. 
So why not make use of that freedom? Why not make use of that, op that opportunity? Why not make use, as the Lord said yesterday night, going through that open door that God has given unto us? It is time to seek the Lord. Amen? Amen? If you want the blessings in your house, it's time to seek the Lord. If you want to be prospered in your work, it's time to seek the Lord. If you want to grow and develop in your spiritual life and see great things happening in your life, then it's time Amen. to seek the Lord. Yes. Amen? It's yeah. important to seek the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us turn to our feet tonight. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Let's give him praise and worship Gloria, Gloria, Dios, Hallelujah. Oh, let us examine ourselves tonight. Hallelujah.